Well, today we're turning a goblet. Watch as Mike Tomislav and Richard and myself all turn a goblet. And we're all going to do it our own way, so uh, look at the description and you'll find the links to all of our videos. Well, it's April 1st, and I'm not fooling. It's time for another four ways to turn something. And that something this month is going to be a goblet. This was Richard Raffin's selection, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I think this will be kind of fun. So uh, I've got a block of box elder here. I turn a lot of box elder, but that's okay. And I'm going to make the, the cup part of my goblet out of this piece of wood. It's a little bit of a burl figure in there. It's got some cracks, and I'm going to try to eliminate those but I may call this an ancient goblet. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do as far as uh, the coloring or, or carving or whatever on there. And I can cut a nice uh, piece of wood for my stem. It'll be a spindle. Let me stop talking and we'll move on. I'm going to go to the bandsaw and cut these pieces of wood out. Alright, now I'm at the uh, bandsaw and I'm going to do a little bit of milling on this wood. Uh, I am going to use this piece of wood for my stem. I'm going to lay that out and then I'll cut it in just a second. I've got a knot on this one end right here so I'm going to just cut that, cut that out. And I've got a combination square which is a nice little tool and I'm going to just take a reading on the thickness of this piece of wood. So I end up with a nice uh, square spindle. And I'm just going to roughly mark this. So that'll be my my spindle. Okay, I'll cut that out in, in a second. Now, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spindle and I'm also going to have a base of walnut. This is a nice piece of walnut here, but it's got a crack right through that area. So I'm thinking I can take a, a circle out of right here that'll be big enough for the base. And I'm going to ebonize the lower part of this spindle into the base. Let me uh, mark this wood up here and I'll do a little bit of milling on it. Okay, now this is the base of my project, the base of my, my goblet, and it's much too big, especially in the, the thickness. But I couldn't really uh, cut a very tight radius. I've got a, uh, it looks like it's a 5 8 inch blade on my bandsaw. So I just did a bunch of little, little facets. So I'm going to go on to uh, cut the rest of my parts. And what I'll do is I'll just make connections for each one of those.
Now I'm at my drill press and I'm going to drill a couple two inch holes. One is going to be in the base. The other one will be in the bottom of the cup. And I'll show you these fixings in upcoming clips as I attach these two pieces to my lathe and do some turning. All right, now I've got the three components for my my goblet ready to go. This is going to be the base. And for the base and the top cup, I've got a two-inch Forstner bit hole that will fit this, uh, this chuck. And I'm going to start with my base expansion recess. And I'm going to just kind of rough this out. All right. Tighten that down. Here is the uh, connecting spindle. Okay, probably twice as long as I need, but we'll get to that a little later. And let me get set up here. I'm going to get a nice uh, bowl gouge and a face shield. I am turning about uh, just about a thousand RPM on this. All right, now this is going to be the bottom of the base. Now this is a cross grain piece of wood. You can see the grain running that direction. So I've got a cut in the correct direction. All right, this is the cup of my goblet, the very top. And I've got a, again, cut in the correct um, direction here. This, this is cross grain. It may be a little bit of a burl. Now I'm going to go sharpen my tool. All right, now, that's really out of balance. I'm going to bring up my tail center for a lot of support. And that's a little bit crazy. All right. take a look. Now, I mentioned before that, you know, I may call this an ancient goblet. I got some serious cracks in here that I could probably fill later. All right. Um, this is going to be the top. I'm going to hollow that out. And I'm going to just start forming the bottom of my my goblet cup.
All right, now I've got the rough shape of my cup completed. I have something in mind that I will show you as we progress on this project. I think these chuck jaws are going to work out fine. When I close these all the way, it's about an inch and three quarter, but I had to find a two inch Forstner bit for that connection. Next thing to do, I'm going to just uh, make this uh, spindle round. <laughs> Now to save time, I'm just going to put my, my safety drive into the uh, chuck jaws and I won't have to take my, my chuck off the lathe. And I got each end marked with the center and with a, a little indentation. All right, now this is a spindle. This is a, a, a turning that I can use a spindle roughing gouge on. And the face shield on. All right, now I'm going to double check the dimension on that recess. I have to make a two inch tenon on each end for the base and for the, the cup. So I've got that marked. I just need to work my way down to that particular dimension. I just worked my way down to that dimension. I think I'm there. Okay, I did a little bit of work off camera there. I've got just a little bit of a, a tenon there. And I carefully worked my way down to All right, I'm going to give you a little preview of something I'm going to do later on in my video. I've got the, the base of my goblet uh, chucked up into my lathe. It's pretty much completed and I'm going to do something later on in the video. I'll show you what that is right now. I've got a piece of walnut okay, that I've been cutting and you can tell right here I've added something. I've made that really dark. I'm going to ebonize this piece this lower part of my goblet. And what I have down here, I can pick it up without making a mess. This is a jar of vinegar and I've added steel wool or nails and anything that will rust. I've had that in a cabinet and it lasts for quite a while. But I'm going to just find another place on here. How about right here? Just put a little bit of this solution on there. And I'm going to ebonize the walnut part of my goblet. And after a while, that just turns black. Okay. I may just let this sit a while and I'll show it to you after it has really reacted. And that's really cool, but I'll, I'll go into more detail when I do this on my base. Okay, I told you I was going to show you this, this uh, piece of walnut right here. 
This is probably five minutes and it's turned that dark already. So this is a really cool thing you can do with some wood if you want to ebonize the surface. Okay, I had to shove my camera off, do a little bit of work. So I'm right there with that one. The other one works. Let me show you. This is kind of rough. It'll give you an idea what I'm up to. I think in the long run it's going to be worth doing it this way. So here is my base and it's way too big. I understand that. Okay, I've got these tenons uh, fitted. I didn't make this too long because it would have bottomed out. And here is my cup. And it's still just just a little tight, but um, as you can see, that's, that's kind of a rough idea of what I'm doing. So I can put my, my cup back in, and I think maybe I'll start working on that to begin with. And I'll show you that. And I can use these jaws throughout the entire project. Alright, now I'm going to continue working on my cup. And something I learned from watching Richard Raffin and even Tomislav who does a really nice job of this is just making a temporary uh, fixing. In this case, it's an expansion recess. I'm going to put this into my my shark jaws, and I am going to complete the bottom of this right in here. Okay, and then I can reverse it and I can work on the rest of it. This just gives me a little bit better approach for doing this. I'm just taking my box scraper and angling it a little bit and using it as a shear scraper. And I want to I want to test my my fit one more time here. Okay, that's that's good. Okay, now I'm going to do just a little bit of sanding in this area, and this will be complete. Then I'll reverse it and work on the inside and hollow out the, the bowl, which is really just a little bowl. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a spear point scraper and just fine-tune the outside of this.
right now if you happen to have one of these tools you have to be really careful if you hold it flat on the tool rest and scrape like that you could get a really bad catch so I've got that angled in a shear scraping orientation and I've made a decision on the surface at least for my my cup right here and I will talk about that in just a little little while got some torn grain I need to deal with and I think I'm better uh, to go after that with a, a gouge maybe turn my speed up a little bit too All right, now I've got a really nasty bark inclusion right here that I am going to work with. And I'm going to fill this with some uh, turquoise colored stone. I'm not sure if it's real turquoise. That's okay. It looks like turquoise. I've got some, uh, really some dental tools that I've had for a long time. I'm going to pick pick one that looks promising and I'm going to just uh, dig in here and remove some of the uh, the bark that's a little bit loose yeah I don't want that in there okay I'll, I'll work on that make sure that's all out of there there's some more it's gonna gonna cause trouble. I'll leave it in there. All right. What it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna soak this area with some uh, medium. No, this is actually thin super glue. Okay, I'm gonna just really soak that area all the way down through there. Now I've got quite a quite a crevice in there. So what I'm going to do, I don't want to waste all my turquoise. I'm going to I'm going to fill some of that with uh, just some sawdust. Now I've got a, a a little box full of sawdust. Different kinds of sawdust, which is not a bad idea. All right. So I'm going to go back and forth with my my super glue. I'm going to let this soak in. And I'm going to take one of these tools and just uh, press that down. So I'm sort of uh, filling in this area with some some cheap <laughs> material, sawdust, and I'm going to take some accelerator. Okay, I've done a little bit of work off camera. I'm just taking a, a little wire brush, cleaning that out really well, and I'm going to show you my turquoise. Alright, now I do have videos showing how I process this this stone um, and I've got this in little containers. Here's some medium fine this is some some coarse which I'll probably use and I strain this through a filter when I bought this I was told this was real turquoise I don't know and here's some some more powder so I'm gonna 
start layering this in that crevice. All right, now I'm going to just uh, kind of layer this. I'm going to start with some some thin super glue, just so I can sort of bond that in there. I hope I'm not blocking your view. Let's go this way. And while that is still wet, I'm going to take some of this coarser stone. What I have here. It's just a, a pen tube right here that I've cut off at an angle and I can put that in my, my little jar and just fill that up and that just makes a nice, a nice tool. I'm going to put another layer of my super glue on top of that. A little bit of accelerator. A little bit more super glue on top of that. I did quite a bit of work off camera. I've got this uh, bark inclusion filled with the turquoise stone and now I've really thought about what I'm going to do with this. Um, now I've really thought about what I'm going to do as far as a surface treatment. This piece of wood isn't uh, all that uh, pretty. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover most of this in metal reactive paint. And I'm going to try to let this area where I've put that turquoise in there alone. And I'm, I'm going to put some gold leaf someplace, probably up here around the rim. I may show you very little of hollowing this cup out. Okay, you've seen people turn bowls before. So, I prepared this surface right here for some gold leaf. Or some metal leaf. I've got a bead right here that I've blackened with a marker. I'm going to take some some gesso and cover this area. Okay, gesso is simply a primer. And the idea is to apply several coats of the gesso, I'm going to turn my lathe on, and sand between coats. And that will prepare a really nice surface. Alright, that's not too bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna let that dry. Do a little sanding with some fine sandpaper and kind of sneak up on a really really smooth surface. Okay now I'm gonna do a little bit of work on my my base and the spindle that's connecting the base with the cup and I've decided to attach the base with the spindle and what I'm doing is I'm I'm mixing up some epoxy and I think that'll make a, a very secure connection I'm going to just fill this mortise in here Jam that on there. <clears throat> yeah. Bring up my tailstock. There we go. Clamp that down good. Yeah. The world's most expensive clamp. Okay, now I've got my base chucked up into my uh, shark jaws. I'm going to do a little bit of rough shaping on this. I've got something in mind. For one thing, this is much too large. I'm going to probably cut that in half. Let me do that right now.
and I'm just removing some of that thickness there with my bowl gouge. And I'm going to do a little bit of a voiceover here and take you through the steps. I'm fast forwarding through quite a bit of this because this takes a few minutes and it gets a little bit repetitive. But here I'm taking a, a cut from the spindle area down into uh, the very bottom. And I'm starting to see a shape that I sort of like at the very bottom there. And I do quite a bit of this work off camera. Okay, now I've got something in mind for a shape down here. This all needs to be quite a bit more delicate, if you will. Um, I've got a, a smaller bowl gouge that made a nice cut right there. I'm going to put a bead in here just for a little bit of, of detail. And I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to my point tool. I'm just taking a beading and parting tool and cleaning this up. Okay, from here. All right, now I have quite a bit of wood to take off on my spindle here in the middle part of this goblet. And I'm going to just kind of fast forward through this. Uh, I'm using what appears to be a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm doing a little back cut there. I'm not going to make this uh, middle part too complicated. I've got a scraper. I'm just cleaning the surface up with Okay, now I've decided not to put any beads or detail in this area right here. It's still a little bit thick or too big in diameter. So I'm going to take a, a bowl gouge, a smaller bowl gouge, and try to make a, a nice finishing cut, turning my speed up a little bit. Come from this side over here. All right. I'm almost there. All right, I had a a few tool marks in there that I wanted to get rid of. So I think that's ready to sand. It's actually got some some nice figure in there in that area. So I'm about done with with this part of my project. I like that. Um, yeah, let's move on. Okay, now I'm getting ready to hollow out my cup, and I'm going to just show you a little bit of this. 
I'm going to take a bowl gouge because I can reach inside there with that tool. And it's a cutting tool and it does a little bit better job. And eventually I'll follow up with a scraper to complete this operation. Okay, now earlier in the video I showed you a little bit of uh, what I was doing with the base. This is all walnut, okay, and the cup is going to sit up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ebonize this, which means I'm going to turn it uh, as black as I can. My definition of ebonizing is you make the surface really black, really dark, but the grain still shows through a bit. So I've got a, a jar here full of uh, material that will rust. And then I filled that up with vinegar. I've got a paper towel down here. I'm trying to, trying to protect my lathe. So I'm going to just cover this surface. Just, you know, really do a wash coat on this. And after a while, it will react with the wood. Now, walnut has some tannic acid. And this procedure really works really well with a lot of different wood. You just have to kind of experiment. But you can see already how, how black that's turning And what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to show the grain, even though I've turned that really black or really dark. You can paint this and make it black, but what will happen is you've obscured the grain. So I'm going to let that sit and we'll take a look at it. But it's working already. All right, I'm ready to do some, some surface embellishment on my cup of the goblet. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some metal reactive paint. I'm going to use a bronze, okay? This is from 10 Seconds Studio. They are no longer in business. And I still have a pretty good supply that still works, and I'll show you how this works here. So I'm using bronze. There is brass, bronze, iron, copper. And I've got a little piece of wood here with each one of those on there to show me what it's going to look like. All right. I got a little bit of this uh, bronze in plastic cup. And I've got the very top of this protected. All right. So I'm going to just uh, paint this on with a little foam brush, completely cover the surface. And I'll take you through the steps of this. Now I got to be careful. I don't want to cover up my, my turquoise. So I'm going to just very carefully paint around that because I want that to show. This will take a little while, so I'll probably speed this up a little bit as I work my way around. All right, now I let the first coat dry really well, and I'm putting a second coat of my bronze on. I'm almost done with this application. This is going to be pretty neat. I want to just make a really even uh, application of this paint. And this is really a paint. It doesn't require any kind of top coat or clear coat on, on this. It's very durable. All right. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll show you the magic. Yeah, there will be some magic.
All right, now I am ready to add um, the magic to my metal reactive paint uh, on the cup here of my goblet. All right, now if you've never used the metal reactive paint, and I think craft supplies and other uh, wood churning suppliers carry this. Again, this particular brand from 10 Second Studios is no longer available. It's got metal, metal powder uh, embedded in the, the paint itself. So I shake that up real good. And I got some in a cup right here. All right, so I'm gonna just take my brush and randomly put some of this uh, this paint on my my cup and there's all different ways of doing this I don't know make a little bit of a, a pattern now you can also reapply this if you're not happy with the first application you can also add another uh, color copper bronze iron anyway I've got <clears throat> I've got a piece of sponge natural sponge and I'm going to just take this and and dab this and, and make a a pattern with the sponge alright now it's important that your paint is still wet. So I'm going to take my my cup out of the chuck jaws. Now this is important. This is something that I I messed up. All right. So I've got this. I'm going to back this off just a little bit. I don't want to get this solution on anything important. Okay, I made that mistake. Uh, I had a piece in a chuck one time and I, I messed up the surface of the chuck. Luckily it was, uh, you know, not extremely important. So I'm, I'm backing this way off. I hope you can still see it. I'm going to take this solution and spray my cup. I'm going to get it completely covered with the, uh, the solution. And this is what makes the, the paint react. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just let that go for 10, 15 minutes, a half an hour. And the metal in the, the paint will react with this solution. Okay, you got to spray that. And eventually it'll it'll turn a different color. So I'm gonna take this and set it aside and work on something else. Okay, now the goblet cup on the left side is uh, right after I applied the uh, paint the second time, and on the right, this is after I had sprayed the solution, and it's starting to react. So that's. Uh, pretty neat and it's a it's a pretty dramatic transition from the left to the right okay now I'm going to continue working on on the cup part of my goblet and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, metal leaf right along the rim and a little bit on the inside so the first thing I need to do is take some of my my sizing this is basically uh, an adhesive, okay, a contact cement, and I'm going to shake that up. And I'm not going to use real gold leaf on this. Uh, it can be a little bit expensive, and if you mess up, you've messed up with some expensive stuff. <sighs> okay, so I'm I'm not going to make this into a a gilding video. I've got videos on that. 
and I'm going to just take a foam brush and just kind of carefully put that on the rim. And this is a contact cement, so I'll put it on there, let it dry until it's a little tacky. And I'm going to put a little bit on the inside of the rim. And I may even fill the inside with something just to kind of make it, make it a little bit uh, over the top. Sometimes this is the best way to do it. Okay, now just for your information, I get most of my gilding supplies from Hobby Lobby. Okay, and they come in a, a pack that looks something like this. Well, these are, are loose leaf um, gilding supplies. This is a metal leaf. It's not a gold leaf. Metal leaf usually comes in a, a larger square like this, and they're a lot cheaper than real gold leaf. So, I'm all ready to go. I'm, I'm just a little bit tacky. This should be all set up and ready to apply my metal leaf. So I just need to, to grab onto this. And I'm going to just work my way around. And once that attaches to that surface, it's not coming off. And you can tell by what I'm doing that I am, I am not a professional gilder by any means. So I'm going to take a little bit smaller brush here and tap all that down. And I'm going to remove the excess. Find some places on there that don't have any leaf on them, on that area I should say. Now I think I'll probably put something on the inside. I've got some other other kinds of uh, metal leaf that are that are kind of fun. This is just a kind of a, a fun project. Okay I'm going to show you just one more thing before I move on. I've got a little bit of uh, tissue paper that comes with the uh, metal leaf and it's a good idea to just put that on on the area that you've applied the, the metal leaf and just kind of burnish that. I'm just taking the, the wooden handle with the, from this brush and that just uh, kind of embeds that a little bit more securely into the, the adhesive. And then I'm going to just take all the excess off. And if I have a little uh, bare spot on there, I can, I can kind of touch that up. But that's pretty good. That, that's not too bad. So then let's uh, move on. We're about ready to, to just put this thing together. And we'll show you that.